raised in Yonkers and lived there many years. And then I went into the service from Yonkers. No, I went to Sampson, New York, yeah. is where the training station was then. Boot camp, they called it, right. yes. No, I got assigned to the Naval Air Station in Norfolk, Virginia. I was there for a year and a half, and then they sent me out to the California, out that way. Mm -hmm. And then I wound up in Bremerton, Washington. And then from there, I went aboard the Franklin, which was in Bremerton. No, I was a yeoman second class. Yeoman second class. Yes, in the gunnery office. I worked in the gunnery. Well, we left, uh, in, we left in early March, and March 19th was the day that we were hit. As, uh, we left early March to go out to the Pacific. And then uh, on the 19th of March was the day that we were hit. We assumed it was a kamikaze, but it was not. Uh, he came, the uh, Japanese, he was an uh, overcast day, and he came down so uh, very low so he could see us, you know, almost we were very low when he came in. He came down, and he just hit right over the flight deck, put one forward and one aft, yeah. On the hangar deck, it's actually, actually, yeah. yeah. And the first initial turn, I would say it was over 700. But lot. in the uh, final analysis, when you see that there's like missing in action because yeah. you can't account for them, yeah. but in the final analysis, it was over 800 men. Oh, I, my the gunnery office was below decks. I had w went outside to to my locker. I was at my locker, and then. All of a sudden, there was a big thud, and some guy yelled out, we've been hit. And so he, he said, come on, we better head for the uh, mess hall. See, the, the ship had air vents. And in the mess hall was where the air vents were. And that was the best place to be at that time. I mean, there, there was smoke where we were. in getting to the mess hall was hard to do because it was all... There was smoke, and you could just about see. But we uh, finally, there was two or three of us, and we made it to the mess hall. And then once we were there, we stayed there in the mess hall because, like I said, you could breathe because it was like air vents. Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, were all trapped below decks, and there was nothing. Well, it was the only place there was air vents. And when they, he found out, the captain told him there was uh, men, 300 men trapped below Lieutenant Gary, the, uh, he got the Congressional Medal of Honor, he uh, found a way out where we can go up the side of the ladder and get onto the flight deck. That's when he took action. He went below and then he said, oh, I know how to get out. There's a uh, ladder going up, a metal ladder going up the side, and we just have to push this. There was a screening like on the outside. He said, we just got to get this out, which he did. They had a bunch of guys and they took the screening out, and then we came up, went out the, sh the side where the screening was. There was a like a, a walkway there, and you just went up onto the flight deck. So he did that and saved probably 300 men. Yeah. When, as soon as I hit the fresh air and got onto the flight deck, uh, normally you would see, well, gee, that's okay. But with me, it took a reverse action, and I just kind of, uh, you know, Buckled, so to speak. So I was gasping for air, so to speak. And then the next thing I look up, and there was Father O'Callaghan giving me a blessing. So I said, oh, boy. I knew I wasn't feeling too good, but I didn't think I was that bad. <laughs> he came by, and I guess he probably thought I was dying. I don't know. I imagine he probably thought I was. But that was kind of, you know, it was a, kind of an awakening. He says, oh, boy, wake-up call. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What's going on here? You know, so you had to see him coming up with his uh, hands crossed and giving me the last rites. I said, "Uh oh, something's not right here." <laughs> yeah. So that's when that's when I really uh, realized it's you know it was I knew I wasn't doing too good, but I didn't feel like I was that bad, you know. But then I told him, I said, "I'm okay, Father. I'm all right. I'll be all right." It's just like. I got too much smoke, and I, I inhaled too much smoke. He said, I said, but I'll be all right. So he said, okay, son. And that was it. Later on, a couple of guys helped me up and took me on to the uh, Santa Fe. He was all over the place.
He was all over the ship. He was, he was unloading ammunition. He was doing so much it was unreal. He was, uh, you know, every place you could see, he was there, so to speak. With the, he was getting people, you know, for work crews and everything. He was, man, he was all over the place. A couple of the guys, he got a get crew with a bunch of guys with him, and they went and, and they got all the ammunition. Yep, and that threw it over the side. Yep, those. Uh, I don't know what they were. They were like uh, bombs for the planes. Uh, that you know, we had so many that they you would hook up. They had what they called great big ones. Oh, they were big ones. And then they had like a smaller one. Yeah, they were big. They were really big. But of course, they were the torpedo bombs, and they, they were the ones that they used just strictly for torpedoes. But he was, boy, he was all over the place. Let's see, from there, they took me on to the Santa Fe, and I stayed in sick bay there for five days, and then they let me go back on the Franklin. The captain wasn't letting anybody back aboard at that time. Because they were going to, we were in Ulithi and they were going to Pearl Harbor. And from Ulithi, he said nobody else could come on aboard, come back aboard. So that was it. And then we went to Pearl Harbor and then back to Brooklyn Navy. Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh took us in tow. And they were able to maneuver their engines a little bit. And but they got so they could uh, get upright, so to speak, which was, they still weren't. Upright, they were still listing, but not as bad as when they were hit. No, well, it did come back up a bit. So they were, they got into Pearl, and then from Pearl they did work on it for a couple of days, and then they said that we were okay to go through the canal, and that's where we went through the canal and up into Brooklyn Navy Yard. It was. Yeah. Let's see, we got into Brooklyn in April. Uh, probably the middle of April, and then like the 26th of April, that was when everything came to a halt, so to speak. I came out right after in 46. I went in 43, and I came out in 46. He, the whole story. he had uh, told us that, that his sister was, uh, was uh, in the Philippines, and uh, he thought maybe being as we were going to Lady Gulf, that's near the Philippines, he figured maybe he could get a chance to get to see her. You know, that he might be able to tell her that he was there and that she could might be able to come to see her. But as it turned out, we didn't get that chance because as soon as we they got to Lady, they formed the task force and headed out to the to, uh, Japan. We were 90 miles from uh, Kyushu, Japan, when we got hit. Nautical miles, I don't know what that is, but we were 90 nautical miles from Kyushu, Japan, when we got hit. Uh, of course, he was still concerned, you know. His sister was uh, liberated from the Philippines because she was a prisoner of war, actually, when he, she was liberated. And, uh, of course, that uh, he wanted to see her, but it just didn't work out that way because the Franklin was heading out to sea, and he didn't get a chance to, to see her, but he knew she was okay, so that's he was happy about that, you know. Yeah, yeah. But he did mention that, well... Uh, we were on board that his sister was okay. Yes, Listen. Father uh, O'Callaghan and, uh, and uh, Lieutenant Gary that got us out. They both got Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, Lieutenant Gary for rescuing us trapped below. He was the one that, you know, got us all out. Because, uh, he, like I said, he knew the ship so good that he got, was able to get everybody. There was like th over 300 of us down there. And then he's the one that got us all out. And so O'Callaghan, and naturally, he got the Medal of Honor for everything he did that day, which was quite a, you know, quite a lot. He was all over the place. I worked for General Motors, and then uh, I got uh, when you when you go when you go into the service, they give you a leave, so to speak. So I just came right back in again after the war and. Wound up retiring after 38 years in General Motors. Yep, and I traveled the country. <laughs> I went all over uh, with for General Motors. You know, they assigned me all different places: so New York to Jersey to Philadelphia to Georgia to Texas. <laughs> I, I went all over the country, and then back home to Jersey. I was in. I went in in 43. I was married in 44. I came home on leave. 
and had a military uh, wedding. I had a picture here somewhere in uniform. We got married. I was in uniform when I got married. Uh, it became official in the papers. All the New York papers had a big spread about the USS Franklin survivors and all that stuff. So actually, the uh, it was about the 26th of April that it was known to the public that the Franklin was bombed and everything. It was that. Then I, like I said, we were in the Brooklyn Navy Yard then, and then uh, it all came out all about the ship and everything. And that's came out. They, some guy came in and wanted to looking for Blanchard and uh, one of the reporters looking. And I said, I'm Blanchard. He said, Well, we got a picture here of you. And we want to interview you. I says, Oh, okay. And then that's they showed me the Father O'Callahan with the giving me the last rites. So and that was the first that I had really known publicly, publicly, because that's they hadn't even mentioned about it. And when we got to Pearl Harbor or anything. They knew the Franklin was hit, but nobody had in the papers or nothing until we got to Brooklyn Navy Yard. And then, like I said, in April, they announced that the, about the Franklin had pictures and everything of it. You know, not only they had my picture, they had the you know picture of it being bombed and everything. And then they had uh, while we were in Brooklyn Navy Yard, they had uh, where you, people could come and get on and see the ship, you know, because it had all big holes in it and everything, you know. So, like, I, when we came into the Statue of Liberty and through the harbor, they were taking pictures of the Franklin with its decks blown off and everything, you know. So they were making a big thing of it then as we were coming into harbor. And then, like I say, a couple of days later, it was into the papers, all those pictures and everything. Then they made it public. At that point, it yeah. made us a very close family uh, because of all of this, because we went through quite a uh, deal after it was, uh, you know, when they announced all this about the Franklin and everything. Uh, we like it. We lived in her mother's house in Brooklyn, and then they had photographers that come to her house in Brooklyn and interview me and everything. And up to that point, the, the kids, they were young, you know, the kids were young, and of course that's a big thing for them, you know, taking pictures and all that. And, and, it, and they were, of course, I guess, what's this all about, you know? Because so we had, and I had to explain it all to them about the, being in the war and all that, you know, because they were just young at the time. And, and then as years, the years grew, and then they knew, got to know more and more about the Franklin, and pictures came out like that and so I was kind of proud in a way I, I was kind of uh, remorseful in another way because uh, when I got to realize it's holy gee there was so many guys that didn't make it that day you know guys you talked to yesterday and you you palled around with just on the ship just a couple of days before gone you know it's it was just uh, kind of a shock you know you, you knew the guys, and, you, and it was hard to believe that, geez, they're gone. <laughs> it kind of, a, it kind of hits your boom all of a sudden, you know. So that's, the, that's what happened to me anyway. I, I didn't go deep in my head with it, but it, it was there. I knew what it was about, and, but I didn't want to, you know, uh, delve into it, so to speak, because I knew what it was a. Uh, not a good experience. <laughs> so I figure, well, why even think about it? It's not going to do any good. You know, it's over and that's it. Done with. But it was quite an experience, I'd have to say that. Yes, definitely. Quite a day. Mm -hmm.